For our family Christmas party this year, I'm doing a 16 pound, six bone prime rib. So that is a big hunk of meat. And I'm gonna be doing it actually on the gas grill this year. But before we can do anything with that meat, we have to get the rub ready. And the rub is actually gonna be on the prime rib overnight because I'll be cooking it starting tomorrow morning. So let's make this rub. Now you can substitute anything you want in this rub if you have a favorite flavor, but this is actually gonna be kind of a two-part rub. One half of the prime rib is going to have just the rub that I'm making right now. The other half is gonna have some salt added. That's because some people in our family can't have that much salt, so we need to please everybody. But let me tell you something. The rub without the salt has a base that works really well. I've used it many times, and that's three tablespoons of Trader Joe's 21 Seasoning Salute. To this, we're gonna add two tablespoons of dried sage, one tablespoon of granulated garlic, one tablespoon of a very finely ground black pepper, one tablespoon of paprika, it's a smoked paprika, and a quarter cup of brown sugar. We're gonna mix this all together. Let's give this a little taste. That's really, really nice. I've done roasts and things like that with no salt before, just using that 21 seasoning salute as kind of a substitute for it. And when mixed with brown sugar, it works really well. But we will be putting salt on half this prime rib. So now let's get to getting the rub on this big old hunk of meat. So here is our big hunk of meat. Now, usually I don't use binders on things, but this has been sitting in the refrigerator sort of air drying a little bit, and it's not a lot of moisture on the surface. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna slather this with three tablespoons of butter. I'm just gonna rub it all over. It's gonna start rubbing here. And get the ends. We're gonna turn it over, this bottom side a little bit. Even though this is not as important, still like to get a little bit of coverage here. Sometimes people will actually mix up sort of an herbed butter to put on prime rib to coat it like this, where the herbs and spices are already mixed in the butter. All right, that looks good. Let's get the rub on. I'm gonna start sprinkling. Turn this around a bit here. I'm gonna turn this over, but I forgot to put a glove on this hand. Uh. Just a little bit on the underside here. It's not gonna need that much, and these bones are gonna be cut off at the end, but I don't wanna leave them out of the party. So now for the salted side, which is gonna be this left side of the roast here, I'm just gonna use my salt shaker some coarse salt on this side. We're gonna eyeball it right down the middle on this end. And again, if anyone from this side wants salt, they can always add it at the end. Now I could have just divided the rub and made two batches, one with salt, one without salt. This is just easier. All right, this bad boy is ready to get back in the refrigerator. It's gonna spend tonight just absorbing that salt and any of the flavors on the surface, kind of drying out a little bit. Tomorrow morning, probably about nine o'clock, it's gonna go out on the gas grill. I'll see you then.
right, the grill is fired up. I'm gonna be using the first and fourth burners today with the prime rib going over the second and third burners, which are off. So we'll have sort of an indirect from both sides. I recently did a video where I tested getting the right temperature in my gas grill. And after testing that and actually listening to some few suggestions from people online and in comments, I'm actually gonna go with that sort of surround the prime rib versus have the heat all to one side and it to the other side. So we'll see how that goes. I think it'll work pretty good today. So we're gonna let this come up to temp and then we'll get this prime rib on in about 15 minutes. Here is our 16 pound prime rib resting on a bed of onions, carrots, and celery in its roasting pan. And it's time to get this on. Get my internal meat probe here, dead center. not going to worry about any of the temperatures in this really for a couple hours. I just want to let this start cooking, getting a crust on it. I'm going to be dialing in the burners in a little bit after this sort of stabilizes. So let's get this cooking. Now in the roasting pan with the onions, carrots, and celery, I also added one cup of beef stock and one cup of water. It's going to help keep some moisture in there. I'll check that throughout the cook today and see if we need to add any more moisture. If we do, I'm just going to add water a little bit at a time. We want the juices from this prime rib to get down in there with all this other liquid and those vegetables to help create an au jus that we're going to make later. And the temperature that I'm shooting for in the grill today is somewhere between 225 and 250. It's going to range. We're going to have to play with these burners until we get it dialed in. The ultimate internal temperature that I'm shooting for is slightly different than what I usually do because this is a 16 pound prime rib. I usually do somewhere around a 10 pound. So instead of pulling it at 133, which is what I would usually do, I'm going to pull it at 130 because there's going to be a little bit more carry over heat when we take it off and tent it and let it rest. So I'll see you a little later when it's time to check this. All right, we're a little over two hours into this cook now. I want to take a look at our prime rib, how it's doing. You can see the temperature's at 226. I may adjust that up a little bit, but it's been holding good between 220 and 250, so I'm happy with that. Well, let's see how we're doing and if we need to add any more liquid to our roasting pan. Oh boy, that looks good. <laughs> if you can see down in there, we've still got a good amount of liquid in there. I don't think we need to add anything more right now. And it might be hard to see in this light, but the surface of the roast is very moist right now. Nothing's drying out. I don't think we need to do any spritzing. It's doing good. All right, let's close it back up, let it keep cooking. All right, we are at 130 internal on the Thermapro. Let's take a look at this prime rib. I know people in videos always say, I wish you could smell this, but man, I wish you could smell this. This smells great. Oh, I am just gonna do a quick spot check with the instant read. I'm not really doubting where the probe is right here. I just wanna get a double check a little bit away from it. Yep, we are good. I'm gonna go ahead and get the probe out of this, get it inside, and it's gonna rest for at least 45 minutes. All right. Here is our finished 16 pound prime rib. I gotta say, I think it turned out beautiful, but I really can't wait to cut into this. So I need to get these strings off first. Just gonna go under here. Don't wanna rip off any of the crust that we made here. I wanna try and save as much as possible. Now on this one, it's been separated from the ribs at the butcher. So I'm just going to lift the roast off. These are our ribs. We're gonna set these aside. These are great to use in other things. Now it's time to cut into this. I'm gonna try and go right dead center here. Let's see, oh. I know it's always an ooh-ah moment when you get that perfect medium rare center, but look at that. Just gorgeous. I'm gonna cut a slice and we're gonna taste. Here we go, a nice little piece of perfect medium rare center here. Remember, when you're doing this, the further out you get from the center, you're gonna get you know, medium, then medium well. So if you have people that like cuts that are a little more cooked, prime rib is great. You can serve those cuts to them from the sides. Let's see how it tastes. 
that's really, really good. <laughs> Man, super tender, super juicy. I mean, that's what you're gonna expect when you're doing a prime rib and taking it to the right temperature. If you'd like yours more rare, I would pull it about 125 to 127. I like mine about medium rare. And that also allows the edges to get a little more well for those people who don't like the medium rare. But if you really wanna taste some of the flavor from the outside, that's what I'm going for right now, some of this crust, this bark. Let's see. Yes, the edges are a little more cooked than the center. That's just logic, you know, there's more heat there that has to penetrate to get to the center to cook that. The outside's gonna be a little more cooked. But the benefit you get from getting a little bit of that outside is you get the crust, you get all the flavor of that rub. Mm. <laughs> now this 16 pound prime rib took five hours and 20 minutes on the gas grill. Kept the temperature between 225 and 250, I would say 95% of the time. Had to make minor adjustments. And by my estimation, I used probably maybe a third of a full tank. So if you're gonna be doing one of these on a propane grill that you know is not hooked to a large propane source or a natural gas grill, just make sure you have a full tank there. Gotta tell you, I've done these on offset smokers, I've done them on the kettle, I've done them in the electric smoker, done them in the oven. This one on the gas grill, I gotta say, it's, it's up there with the rest of them. It's not smoked, we didn't add any smoke, but that rub on the outside penetrated, the salt penetrated where we had salt. The rest of the rub without the salt penetrated enough to create a nice crust. Oh my gosh. If you want to add even a little more to this, get yourself a little horseradish, dip it in that, spread it on there when you cut yourself a slice. That's the traditional way. And I gotta tell you, with prime rib, that's a good way to do it. So if you've ever wanted to do prime rib on a gas grill, don't hesitate. You can add smoke flavor there if you want with a smoker box or a smoker tube. But honestly, with a good rub, and giving it the time to cook, you don't really need the smoke. 